Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Anne, for the, inv for the invite. I'm Kaina Boagac, and I'm a lawyer uh, from Algeria. I'm a corporate lawyer, but also we do a lot of women's rights and human rights through a uh, women lawyers group, Middle East. And I'm in charge of uh, North Africa and Maghreb countries. So I'm very happy to be here in this session. So I've been asked to this talk about the escalation effect of fake news and the pandemic. So um, as we all witnessed, I mean, this uh, during this period of COVID, our situation, our the weather, emotional situation, have been very difficult for all of us. Unfortunately, all what's going on in the media didn't help. Uh, in terms of easing uh, our personal tension, but also tension between countries, but also tension between uh, different stakeholders. And I'm going to share with you just a few examples before I try to summarize, which to look into the Algerian situation, which is basically why we are here today. So, so basically, the misinformation have preceded, if we look at it, have already preceded before even the virus started. You know, and the misinformation becomes sort of how we call it. Uh, a habit of splitting through our defenses and waving a fake sort of ID and fake news, bouncing normally, stand guard and making itself to our home, then it's become a sort of a second truth. We are very vulnerable and we've been more vulnerable during this COVID-19. So we listen to different sources of media. Our, I would say our rational become very hidden in some, at some point. So basically, even if we look into some element related to the COVID, there is a lot of controversy and a lot of madness, I would say. First of all, if we look into the source of COVID, where the coronavirus started. So we have different uh, theories where basically some would say it comes from Wuhan, and there was even a fake video that was posted, and it was really shocking. It's basically an Indonesian posted an online video in June 2019, this very video, which was basically showing bats, rats, and cats in a, in a market in Indonesia, were basically changed and rechanges and become a Wuhan market 2020, which is basically completely a false fake news. But a lot of people were sort of been in looking to where this virus comes from that are changing our life on a daily basis that we have to obviously uh, believe on everything. Of course, for the conspirator, a lot of them, I don't know if you get through, uh, if you pass through this, this information, that maybe COVID um, is a conspiracy and coming from Microsoft founder Bill Gates as a part of the global agenda to lower population. This is one of the origin. And, and then we have a very funny story when it comes to symptoms. We've heard a lot of symptoms. Even the WHO was not be, being in a learning process like any other country or doctor that was hit by this uh, disease. So basically the symptoms were very changing, evolving. And now we become whether we still do we need to hear what our government says, what our the Japanese doctor, the UNICEF, the CDC, the Stanford, the John Hopkins, every, um, every situation, every new symptom, and whether COVID attacks young uh, under age, what are the most vulnerable population? All these elements are really poisoning in terms, are even harder to than the COVID itself. Another element looks into the treatment, and this has really become even, I would say, more dangerous at some point. And I will tell you a very short story when it comes, I don't know if you came across the nicotine element. In fact, in April 24th, uh, a very renowned French neurologist and professor uh, at the Institute Pasteur, which name is Jean-Pierre Chensou, basically announced that there might be um, a relation between uh, nicotine, the level of nicotine in a body, and obviously the people, the, the 3,000 people that came into the, uh, the Institute uh, in terms of data, and many of them that hit uh, more severe uh, COVID-19 um, symptoms were non-smokers. So what happened based on this very information, it was replicated on a social media at a certain level that it went out of control, where people were saying that nicotine actually heals COVID. As a result, many people run into pharmacies buying patches, nicotine patches, and guess what? They ended up at uh, in hospitals, in ERs, because they were intoxicated by the level of, uh, of, of nicotine in their bodies. Um, the second thing is the chloroquine, 
which started with this whole big war, which is still ongoing between the Professor Didier Raoult of Marseille Hospital, obviously based on the 4,000 4, patients he had who treated by the chloroquine from the very first day. Obviously, all of them um, were, were healed. Today, we still don't know because the French government, for instance, and different governments are taking their own decision. Today, the chloroquine is a treatment used in Algeria. However, it's very controversial in Italy uh, and controversial in French as well. So the government doesn't want to take a decision um, when it comes to that, and it's not declared at this level. And um, again, how the another maybe element is how people are responding to this pandemic, whether it's the phenomenon of self-isolation, putting ourselves in quarantine, or putting even a country in quarantine, like it's happened very early, uh, early I mean, end of uh, early uh, March to Italy, which was completely isolated from the rest of the world. Obviously, um, we see that uh, people respond to the pandemic on a different level. When it comes to the human level, we all heard that the pandemic is a government um, a plot trying to trying to use this uh, this virus to control its people. And nevertheless, the kind of a number of cases that are growing, it's all it's all being attacked as being fake news. Actually, when it goes to Algeria, especially looking into the Hirak movement, the very first week. Actually, when the, the when the government uh, announced the closing of airports, and that's basically mid March, which was I believe 17 of March, the government, uh, the I mean the Hirak movement continued another round on the other uh, on the uh, on the next Friday, which was supposed to be a celebratory anniversary for one year, and none of them was thinking about the effect of the COVID because at that point. Again, and even today, the information, uh, all this COVID element is a fake news. And following to that, unfortunately, the parliament and the Algerian government has to pass a new law in terms of fake crim criminalization of the broadcast of any fake news. The law opposed by the protester, of course, and the human rights activists, because unfortunately, even though you could think that it, it has some clarification because of the text provide clearly saying that the bill is uh, in its section related to the criminalization of disseminating false news undermining the public security and the public order. So basically this element is very important in terms if you are a lawyer to look at it that you cannot be, uh, I mean, the only moment will you will be uh, to, act to, uh, to answer to any criminal act is if your information get to the level uh, that it's escalated to the level that it's disturbing the security, public security and order. However, unfortunately, the problem with this kind of law is it's completely misunderstood and misused. There, uh, any person, unless, unless uh, proven otherwise, could be uh, considered as a fake news uh, disseminator. So I think this is one of the answers. Thank you, everyone.